Hey guys, so if you needed an example of what life at Hive would be like in a post Minijin era, although we still know that she is officially still at Adore, it's when you get a video like crazy. La Seraphim's new music video just dropped a couple days ago. Jin from BTS has already done the dance challenge and it pissed off a few bunnies. But this music video to me seems like La Seraphim's actual debut to be themselves in all of their quirky funness. So we're going to react to the Seraphim's crazy, the music video, but I wanted to put it in context because I think that there is going to be a renaissance of creativity throughout all of the Hive sub labels now that we don't have this overhang and drama with Mini Jin stirring things up and sabotaging other people's songs. So if you haven't checked it out, go check check out Crazy. It is the craziest thing ever. And definitely check out the accompanying music video that looks like they were doing a scene for the music video that I don't believe was put into the actual music video, but it was so funny in its weird, unserious way that I think they wanted to upload it and share it with the fans because it is so cool. Anyhow, so let's talk about La Seraphim because if you're like me, you kind of only paid attention to La Seraphim in context of the whole mini gen, new jeans, BTS drama. And perhaps you're not like a huge uh, girl group fan. And so, eh, like, you know, I kind of saw them in passing here and there, but I didn't really pay much attention. For this video, I went and looked through all and watched every single music video that they published. And it really does seem like these girls are super talented, but not just talented. They strike me more theatrical so you know in the whole entertainment business there is some real big street cred if you say like you are theater trained like you, you actually do theater even though film and tv gets a lot more of the hype and the buzz and the bigger paychecks there's something about the quality of artist you are if you're like theater trained and these girls seem to be more along the lines of they are trained professionals who show up to work. La Seraphim, what, what, what does this mean? Okay, so La Seraphim is a different, it cutesy spelling of Seraphim, which means angels. Seraph is the singular, Seraphim is plural so it's a group of these angels but they're angels that have six wings they're fiery and they are guarding the throne of god so they're kind of the elite angels in the angel hierarchy i kind of got vibes of they're sort of like the secret service for for god and so they are angels, but they are kind of like, don't mess with us type of angels. Like, yes, we're supposed to be heavenly and, and godly, but we're the ones that have to do the dirty work and we got to get in there and fight. I think that was a bit apropos. I don't know if it was in reaction to the whole mini gin drama and the rivalry that was going on in Hybe or if it was complete coincidence, but it does seem like these this was the right name for the group, this was the right group, and these were the right girls to go to battle to be the first ones to get picked on by mini gin. Yes, we know that there was uh, and there still is a lot of drama with Eyelet, but really when we went through the whole history of the Hybe drama, 
La Seraphim was the first target and the first point of contention with Minnie Jin and the her drama. Now, La Seraphim also is an anagram of the phrase "I'm fearless," and they definitely had to be fearless. And if you look at the videos and their kind of artistry in the beginning. It looked like they were really trying to put up a brave front, a fearless front. Yes, it was them, but still, there was something that just wasn't coinciding. I think in terms of like, like their artistic spirit. It looked like they were really showing up and doing a great job and working. But if you look at their debut song in 2022, that was in May. And if you look at <laughs> the song they just released, wow! I think it really does tell a story. So they remember La Seraphim was supposed to debut in January to March of 2022, and we saw all the hoopla going on in Hybe and Source Music in 2021. Remember that there was supposed to be the New Jeans debut in the fall of 2021, followed by La Seraphim in January to March of 2022. But instead of debuting New Jeans in the fall of 2021, we saw Minnie Jin just use all that time, delay the whole concept and all the work that she had to do for the New Jeans debut, and just. Work on setting up her own label, taking new jeans, and then by the fall of 2021, instead of debuting, she kind of sort of had her debut, debut of her company, and then she pushed back the debut of new jeans, and they debuted in July of 2022, and it looked like she was trying to. Push back La Seraphim's debut because she's like, well, New Jeans was supposed to debut first, so if if New Jeans is, has its delayed, then the others have to be delayed too. But Source Music was like, look, you cut and run from us, so we got a debut because you know he he has his own timeline and he has his own budget. He's got to make his own money and you know get the, get the work done. So they weren't even able to debut La Seraphim. On time, but they pushed it back to May of 2022. Five girls are part of La Seraphim, but originally there were six. So the five are Sakura, who was the main star that they were building this group around. Then Kim Chaewon, Ha Yunjin, Kazuha, and Hong Eunche. Now the Person who was also part of it was Kim Garam, but she had to leave a few months after they debuted over a bullying scandal allegation. Now, just two weeks after they debuted the first song, there was a bullying accusation that came up from somebody who went to high school with. Kim Garam, and this person said that they were so mentally tormented that they had so much a PTSD. They had to announce to the world how horrible of a person Kim Garam was. Now, it doesn't seem as if, like, can is there enough from what I've seen? Is there enough to go on to 100% believe the accu- accuser or 100% believe Kim Garam? No, but I'm leaning more towards believing Kim Garam now. Kim Garam had, in the summertime, after she went through this horrible ordeal, and it looked like there was a media smear campaign because a lot of the things that. Really shifted public opinion against Kim Garam, and then mysteriously disappeared. Were things that appeared that were concluded to be false rumors, fake pictures, like even like drawings of like phallic things of, that were attributed to her that weren't true. And then you know now that I've been through the whole bunny you know slaughtering, um, like harassment, they are obsessed with like kind of these phallic things. So. She said in 
August of that year. Remember, they debuted in May. Two weeks later, there's this whole like big attempt to like tear her down. Then she gets her contract canceled by High Ben Source Music in July. And then she finally spoke out in August. And she said, and she submitted evidence. She said that actually this person that accused her of being bullied, she did yell at. She yelled at this person because she was upset that this person was distributing inappropriate photos of their friends. So, look, somebody in your you're in school, or maybe like you're not, you're even an adult, and you find out that somebody at your school or office or whatever, like you know, in the place that you go every day is just is like uploading pictures of your friend and you're gonna stick up for your friend so she said that she went over and she just like you know had a come to jesus moment and then that person apparently filed like oh well i feel bullied it looks like you know it that because that person didn't deny that that, that they were distributing these pictures of, of this classmate so it looks like to me that person was just as tricky as you know somebody else in a blue cap and instead of dealing or kind of admitting and repenting and atoning for doing something bad they're gonna throw the blame on like i don't like how you yelled at me about that i feel bullied it seems like a classic move uh, among a certain type of person and so anyway, so that's that was the unfortunate drama with the debut of La Seraphim. And it looks quite suspicious because you know how she had her contract canceled in July of 2022. What was else what else was going on in July of 22? New Jeans debuted in July of 2022. So a lot of y'all have already said that the timing is extremely suspicious and that there's just a history of sabotage among a certain subset of the K-pop industry. So let's get back to La Seraphim. All right, so what did I like and not like about looking at some of their debut videos, especially the first one? The first one apparently had great reception because it was very obvious that they were going through all of the subtypes and genres of k-pop you could see elements of like when they were switching between sm jyp yg just like circling and running circles around the references because you could see, oh, that was totally YG lighting. That kind of looked like Baby Monster before Baby Monster was Baby Monster. And then a little bit of, oh, that's an uh, homage to Blackpink or 21. And then definitely Girls' Generation. And then when they were just like dancing all over the floor, I definitely saw Miss A of like y, of JYP. So you could totally see that these girls have grown up, especially at their generation of K-pop, they saw the all the previous w works of all the K-pop groups and it looks like they really just mastered all of it to the point where it started to bore them. Because it looks like to me they were extremely precise, very good, very adaptable because they just they just move from different genres but what it what it kind of did for me was like it didn't give them a unique flavor of themselves what where it started to look like they were coalescing on some sort of theme like basically refers to their name of the group la seraphim so it has like this kind of strange aggressive more of the dark angel type of religiosity tones and so it started to give me a feeling of like wow okay so their setting is sort of like a lady gaga because lady gaga also when she started was doing like all of the different references and genres and they she also settled upon like a little bit of this creepy like religiosity tone but her vibe was more like very desperate to 
you know, be famous and to need this like celebrity kind of like persona and thing. Whereas these girls, I think kind of can have that Lady Gaga frame. I think it, it's, it still works that little religiosity kind of thing and uh, being able to be very flexible and performance oriented, but they don't, they don't have that feeling of like they need to be a celebrity they need to be a star and i think that works for them because they were trying to do the mold yes in like uh, the beginning videos but what we saw from cr crazy and then also smart was being willing to just play with the comedic side of themselves and i think that is a very refreshing and now it's a it's a it's it's a genre that they can create that i think the fans want now whereas they want a bit more than just the formulaic k-pop but i don't think many other groups thus far girl groups especially have been able to take that step across the line to really, in the music, let this quirky, I don't give, I don't care, but you're making us really laugh and have fun, you know, with you. Not a lot have, have really crossed that line. I, I can only think of the K-pop pop girl groups being able to uh, exhibit that in the non-music parts of entertaining like going on the variety shows or in their interviews or in their social media those types of things but still even you know remember they're an idol you know they're they're supposed to be they're more kind of like on the model side but these girls are more on like the comedian side and i think at first they didn't they were not able to really show that because they had to test the market they had to be that k-pop girl group but i'm glad they didn't try to force that and let this quirkiness come through. I think the reason why this is my hypothesizing about like how good they seem to be technically, the reason why I think they were able to get the quirkiness is I think they, they got through their job fast. I would bet a lot of money that they are efficient on set. When they film the music videos, I bet there's not a lot of takes. I bet they nail it on the first take, second take. There's not a lot of extra work, not a lot of extra drama, no waiting. These girls look like they show up, they show up on time, they work, everything's practiced, they get through it, and then the director's probably like, oh my gosh, uh, I didn't realize it would get, get done so fast. You girls are good. And then, so I think that they then are able to do all this kind of just fun just be fun with it and they capture that on camera and then i think it looks like it works and i think then perhaps source music is just saying like okay we have more confidence that we can actually put this in the actual product and what they reminded me of is like at first like you need to get the Kit Kat bar out, you know, make sure that it meets all the standards, what people, you know, think of as just standard chocolate. And then now we're seeing all, you know, have you seen the Japanese style Kit Kats? You crazy flavors. I had no idea. At first, I thought even like strawberry was crazy or green tea matcha was crazy. Mm -mm. They even have a Sakura, but not only one sakuras they have like five different sakuras including like mochi sakura beat like everything and then they're just like oh i'm gonna be a sweet potato or uh, or boba or like other crazy flavors and it seems like now like when i saw crazy i saw the japanese flavors of kit kats and not apologizing for taking it there and then people just being like oh my gosh this is so cool what I think works for them is like, they're the fun song at the club. They're the ones that have that, K they can do the K-pop. So this is the confidence. It's like, it's not like, oh, I'm gonna be like the popular girl at school. It's just like, I can do that, but I can also be comfortable, 
free, and fun in my own skin. And I think now that they have the burden of the whole blue cap, green stripe lady off of them, they are now able to be free to just let 100% of their energy go towards this is our flavor. This is our color. It gave me this like very artistic and quirky sound, almost like a Lily Allen. Lily Allen, you know, with that like very charming vibe of like F you, but I'm, you know, but she's still very pop. She's like this underdog fighter in like a flouncy skirt. But then also these, the La Seraphim girls look like they have the vibe of now, like a little bit more of like a Zendaya or Olivia Rodrigo. All that, I think, combined together, I think they should lean into because, like, we're seeing a lot of fun stuff uh, from <laughs> from their latest release. And I think they're, like, the girl crush, but the girl crush of a comedian. Like, if you are really happy to be with the fun girls who actually look, you know, like be like you know the beautiful popular girls this is probably why they were hated on so much because you know usually you only get one or the other but it looks like these girls have both and you know these are the smart ones these are the smart funny and very hard working talented girls and so i'm really glad that they were able to do such a fun music video and they're not so concerned about looking like so glamorous because i think that will really hold them back and this is where they have their competitive advantage if they do just more of the things that really entertain us and make us laugh in the context of a k-pop song which is incredibly hard to do and i think they did it one confirmation i got about how talented they were was when they were doing this dance with zico Zico was like, oh, I learned it the opposite way, like reverse, like instead of like, you know, right arm up, left arm up, can we do it that way? And the girls are like immediately like, okay, we can reverse our dance. And then for one of their live music shows, they had outfits that were crocheted by one of the members. She crocheted it. I think... <laughs> I think they need to lean into that. That's 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 weird. That's crazy. It's cool. <laughs> it's a... She crocheted their outfits. Who does that? And on the music video Crazy itself, I thought this was very on point, on key, like very smartly done. Obviously, the references were from voguing the whole uh, drag subculture. And I thought they did it really well in the context of I don't want to get all political but this is how I feel like this is in a very ap appropriate way like if of of wokeism like they are really participating in this subculture but they didn't have to put in any box braids they didn't have to put a weave like yes they were you know they were tapping their weaves, but you didn't have to culturally appropriate an outfit. They had none of that, just themselves. And, you know, there were probably girls like at this age, they were it, in, in junior high, they were probably tapping their weaves without never even having a weave in their life. And then the backup dancers definitely came from that community and that world. And they weren't, they were... Obviously, like this is why I think it's a theatric, more theatrical, because in a music video, the back dancer seems like in a different class. Whereas on in theater, on stage, if you have people as part of the chorus, there's a, a lot of respect for the performers in the chorus as well. And so I thought they did a great line where they were they were the chorus. They weren't the stars because you have to remember that La Seraphim, they are the stars uh, of this video and this song. But then they even gave the chorus members the their own solo frame where the girls were not in it. And it really did. I felt like it it was a it was a, a perfect balance of this is just how we 
do this type of music and fun stuff together. It's not like appropriating one or the other, but it's really very well balanced because it felt very respectful. And that <laughs> the thing was in the fun. And even the slight mean spirited thing about the soap and whatever. They were able to take sabotage. I think it was a message. You're going to try to make me slip up. I'm going to do a death drop. So, so that just shows a bit of the strength that the girls have created through this horrible, horrible ordeal. And I feel like now this is the debut. Yes, they've been around now with us. But I feel like half of their mind and their energy is like waging this battle that we're not seeing because it's behind the scenes in the hype building and wherever else. And then the other half was their work. And now I feel like there's more dedicated to their work. And it seems very fun, very cool. And I hope they kind of continue and experiment along these lines because it is making people happy. And people in the comments have been saying, thank you for bringing the fun back in K-pop. Totally unexpected, but I'm glad. And now I'm not surprised. After looking at all of their videos, they are definitely talented enough to be confident to then not try to look so perfect. And that I think is gonna be their competitive advantage moving forward. All right, guys, what did you think? Did you see the video? If you have, put your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.